welcome to the Samantha Leith Show with me. Yep, you guessed it, Samantha Leith. Each month we dive into a different topic and this month is all about emotions, feelings and moods. What they are, how we use them, the good, the bad and the what the... F and how we can get a true handle on them to help us live our extraordinary lives. Emotional intelligence is the capacity to recognize, understand, and manage our own feelings and to recognize, understand, and respond effectively to those of others. First talked about in 1990 by Peter Salavoy and John Mayer, it became more popular when the American psychologist Daniel Goleman came out with the book Emotional Intelligence in 1995. In it, he stated there were five key elements, self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills. Then in 2002, this was redesigned to four domains, self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, and relationship management. Back to the basics, EI or EQ, it's a debate. We don't say II with IQ for intellectual intelligence, but with emotional, it hasn't been consistent. EQ is the level of a person's EI. For the purposes of this, I'll abbreviate as EQ and don't get cranky with me about it. Most people do, all right? At a most basic level, improving our EQ helps us to be more successful in our personal and professional lives, from being able to manage stress and overwhelm to being able to resolve conflicts and motivate others. It's a skill. Like improving our confidence or lifting stronger weights, we can learn to develop ourselves in this area and we should. A 2003 Harvard Business Review reported that 80% of competencies that differentiate top performers from others are in the domain of emotional intelligence. It's important. Making it not what you know or who you know, but how you work with them. New one. Like charisma, high EQ can also have a darker side. When you have a strong ability to recognize and understand others, it can give you an upper hand to manipulate or take advantage of situations. I'm gonna assume that nobody watching this video would have those intentions, so let's keep going, shall we? Self-awareness, it's about emotional self-awareness, accurate self-assessment and self-confidence. This self-awareness is a continual motion throughout our lives. Sense and emotion, acknowledging the feeling, identify what the situation is, asking questions, taking action if and when needed, reflecting and learning, becoming an expert in you. With this kind of self-awareness, including the ability to really acknowledge your strengths and weaknesses, it leads to greater confidence and emotional regulation. Self-management. Emotional self-control, transparency, adaptability, achievement, initiative, and optimism. Self-management is how you manage yourself, your actions, your thoughts and feelings. Being able to control your mind in these areas will not only help you achieve more and feel more connected, it'll help you to stop those monkeys that take over your amygdala, creating chaos in your mind. Now on to other people, because well, hopefully you're not spending your time on this planet all alone. Social awareness, it's about empathy, organizational awareness and service. Have you heard the saying, read the room? That's social awareness. Our ability to notice what's happening for others and using our own understandings, trying to sense what they're feeling or thinking. This is where our capacity for empathy will help us to connect with them and respond in the very best way. Lastly, there's relationship management inspirational leadership, influence, developing others, being a change catalyst, being good at conflict management, building bonds, teamwork and collaboration. This is where the dots from the other three parts are connected. If you're struggling in one of those areas, it will impact your relationships. We know that. From getting a team on the same page in the workplace to negotiating with your five-year-old about bedtime, relationship management is a skill we all need. What crazy person invented the stuff? Nobody on earth wants to be spun around in the air. Are they mental? I really don't want to do this. I can't focus. My heart is going to burst out of my chest. I'm so cold when I'm sweating and I'm breathing like I just ran a marathon. Make it stop. So let's look at how we can improve our emotional intelligence, shall we? Well, of course we will. Step one, observe. Actually, I'll just stop there. Like right there. Don't need to go on. Observing yourself and others sounds so simple, yet we struggle with it. 
Do we really notice and understand the cues our own body and mind gives us? Are we actually paying attention with two ears and two eyes to the people in our lives? Chances are you're not. And when you do, my friends, there's so much information to be had. Depending on what area of your emotional intelligence you want to work on, some of these may be more appropriate than others. So let's go through them. Recognize, name and accept your emotions and feelings. To label or not to label, that is the question. Well, labeling is powerful. It's not good or bad, it's what you're experiencing in the moment. Naming and accepting it will help you move on. Fighting it will soon have your monkey mind and fisticuffs. Be curious about what the emotional feeling is trying to tell you. These things don't just pop on up to give you the sh shifts. They are guides, signals to something with deeper meaning. When you felt scared walking down a side street with no lights on at midnight, all alone, it was probably for good reason. If you're continually feeling frustration in a certain situation, maybe it's time to change it. Then notice the changes in your body to situations. We change physically, especially when a strong emotion is there to say, hello. Have you ever thought to yourself, oh, hang on, how many times do I need to get that message? We're human, so probably a lot. But starting to really pay attention to your physicality can help reduce the number of times you need that gentle reminder. Practice showing authenticity, honesty and vulnerability. We probably lie to ourselves more in a year than we do to others in a lifetime. That's big lies I'm talking about, not those little ones, you know, the ones that you just think it makes life easier. When someone says, how are you? And you automatically say, okay, even if you're not. I've started to pause in these situations these days and answer more honestly. It doesn't mean going into a 10 minute spiel about what's going on, but showing up with more humanness is a good thing. Use mindfulness habits such as journaling and breath work. I know I say this in relationship to just about everything because it works. When you can look through a journal and see patterns or know to take those three breaths without second guessing yourself to help calm your nervous system in a situation, you will thank me. Improve your general communication skills and help reduce the stigma around talking about emotions, feelings or moods. Words can be big and scary and we learn to dampen them down from an early age. Stop. Big boys don't cry. Ladies don't say things like that, blah, 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 blah. We live in a world with increasing mental health issues and I wonder if we made it okay to share how we're feeling or what we're experiencing without fear of judgment, it would be different. Put yourself in new situations. I've recently been doing more charitable work and it's really opened my eyes and my thinking greatly. So does travel, new social experiences, studying and even reading a different genre, like pick up a vampire fiction. Create boundaries, especially in areas you know are likely to set off an emotional reaction for you. You can go back to episode 25 for more help on boundaries. Bottom line, they're good for everyone. Finally, take responsibility. Not just for your actions, but for the emotions and feelings also. Nobody can come into your body and make you feel something. You did that. It may be based on a reaction to a previous situation which you didn't control, but that feeling, it's all on you. What the f- I had no idea we were doing this today. Am I happy or angry? Neither, I guess. It just all feels so unexpected. Like, who gets to be a kid like with this when we've all got so much adulting to do? I'm so wide-eyed and I'm, I'm open to all these amazing possibilities around me but my heart's racing and it's kind of getting calmer but it's racing and I feel all warm inside. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode. Please like, share, comment and subscribe and help me to be able to bring you more juicy topics like this. And don't forget to grab the worksheets on the website, samanthaleith.com slash freebies. And please stay in touch on the socials. I'd love to hear what you've been up to.